Hey, what's up, everyone? I am in Portugal and I'm here today with a new video. This video is a follow up video to my top five list of beginner and geniuses. So, um, I thought I'd make this a uh, couple of videos dedicated to beginners because I had a little thought to myself that um, I should probably do that because it's probably very interesting and probably something that. A lot of people are interested in, I guess. I don't know if there are that many people that are getting into ant keeping. So um, this will be just a video explaining the basics of ant keeping for beginners, which I think will help everyone that uh, has watched my last video. And my last video will also have help everyone that has watched or is watching this video. So in case you you note, yes, I do, I am in the same clothing. Yes, it is the same day. In fact, I'm recording this video right after I recorded the last one. So, um, my ant uh, care guide for beginners. So what do you need to start ant keeping? First of all, you need ants, which is pretty obvious. But before, you should make sure that you're prepared. The best a thing that you need, the best friend of an ant keeper is information. So the first thing that I'll recommend a new beginner ant keeping ant keeper to do is research, research, research and research a little more when you think you're done researching. Because the more you know and the more information you have in the back of your head about the ant species that you're taking care of or ants in general the better able you'll be to take care of any problems or just in general to give a better quality of life to your ants. Um, the other thing that you need to understand is that uh, ant species will crash. They will crash on you when you're trying to grow them up. And even when they're, they are grown up, there are a lot of factors, diseases, fungus, other like mites, stuff like that, that you will not be able to predict and sometimes you'll not be able to notice until it's too late and they'll die, okay? This is extremely common with ant species that you buy and import because they'll come in more they'll come in more stressed out, they'll come in conditions that you have no idea how they were before, you have no idea of the age of the colony, the age of the queen, you have no idea how all that went, and you can have a little bit of a perception of a perception if you talk to the people, but you can never be 100 percent sure. So, do note that ant species will die off. And do also note that we're not making them die off more for keeping them. In the wild, they die off a lot more than they die off in the, in the careful hands of most ant keepers, even if they are beginners. You technically will statistically always be giving a better opportunity of life to your ant colony and though if you keep tropical ant species you won't be able to let them reproduce which is technically their goal in life you will be able to give them a better chance at life and a better chance at a better quality of life so um uh, well i should probably say that if you are a beginner please do not import tropical ant species uh nor from temperature anything that's foreign to your country state area Please, if you are a beginner, do not buy and import them. Uh, I think that buying ants and importing them from other places is fine as long as you know what you're doing and you do not affect the wildlife and the biosphere where you live. So if you're expert enough to take care of that responsibility, then by all means go ahead. It's awesome to have foreign ant species and different things you've never seen. It's absolutely amazing. And most of us that are into ant keeping live uh, in places where we don't have the, those awesome tropical ant species. So I'll say that that's totally fine. That's my view on the point. Uh, but if you are a beginner, for your own sake, for you to be able to take care of an ant, it's better that that ant is accustomed to the climate where you live. Where you live. So for your own sake, please do not import Foreign, foreign ant species. If you import or if you buy something that you know is exists in your local area, that's fine. That's completely fine. Um, so, but just please do not 
by a foreign ant species when you're a beginner. Give yourself about a year or so of ant keeping experience with various ant colonies if you can. So, let's assume you know what you want and you can find it or already have. So you have an ant species which you should probably know at least a genus of. Identifying a genus of ants is fairly easy. The internet should absolutely help you out and you should have preferably one of the five that I talked about in my last video. What you'll need then is a setup. So for the setup, you'll need something that either is probably don't do a natural setup when you're a beginner because you'll want to check on the nest. You should also never do a natural setup when you're starting out an ant colony from a, a single queen because you have no idea to know how she's doing. So we probably should use a test tube setup for that. To set up a test tube setup, just go on YouTube there. There are a lot of guides to that for some reason, just water, cotton, space, cotton, done. Um, then when you start to have a colony, or if you bought a colony, what you want to create them is a nest and an outworld connected. Do not use all-in-one setups. All-in-one setups, they're fine if you know what you're doing, but they encourage you to be very minimalistic in the, in the care of the colony. For example, you, you usually have the outworld very, very small in comparison to the nest, and you don't have space to place water test tubes, and uh, ants need to drink, what can I tell you? Ants, ants will die in uh, all-in-one setups if you don't do it properly, so those are fine uh, if you know what you're doing and uh, you don't get uh, taken away by the the feeling that it's all there so you don't have to attach anything else you do you will so to me I wouldn't use them uh, a nest and an outworld in the outworld you need to place a water test too because ants need to eat what to to eat water to drink water okay the nest and the the outworld should be connected and there should be no way the ants could escape the outworld can be open as long as you place a protective barrier on the, the inside so, they don't, so that the ants cannot crawl out. Note that this can be just simply baby powder with alcohol that you placed all around the rim. The alcohol will evaporate and the baby powder will be very slippery for the ants. Do also note that some ant species can easily cross vertical barriers, so you'll need something horizontal like that goes all around the outworld as sort of a lip. Um, or maybe just a lid with some mesh. You also need to give them ventilation, they need fresh air, they breathe just like us. Uh, and you need to give them food. Now food depends on the quantity of humidity, ventilation or temperature, that depends on the genes. Most ants, or um, I'll say all ants except Ara and Acromermix, which is two genes that you absolutely cannot keep as a beginner, um, they all eat insects and okay there are some that eat seeds and you can keep them solely on seeds but those are just amazing they're massa and that's top I should probably don't give spoilers uh, so yeah I'll bleep top what um, on my latest video so those you can keep with seeds alone but mostly you need to give them insects and to that the best insect to give is mealworms but you should if you could give a variety, and you should probably kill them before because most of the insects they'll be able to give a fight back to the ants and they'll kill a few. For example, crickets they'll absolutely decimate ants. So if the colony is big enough, they'll overpower them before they lose a lot of members. But if the colony is small, the cricket will just kill half the population, and that's absolutely terrible for an ant colony. So kill them first. It's just so, so messed up. But yeah, do that. So, I will say that getting into creating DIY setups is the best, but at least your the first setup that you do should be bought from a store that does end setups. Because that way you will make sure that everything is accounted for. Just note that Water is extremely important. Water is one of the things that I think that most beginner ant keepers fail to do. Also, uh, most ants need to eat very regularly. 
okay? Uh, some of them can store food in their bodies long for a long time, so we sometimes will find, ah, oh, my, ant's, my ant's colony is not eating. Yeah, they're fine, they have enough food, probably. But once again, that's something you should study about each, at least each genus. If you can go specific to the species, then the more specific and the more information you know to be applicable to your ant colony, the better. So that's all I think that you need to focus on when you are a beginner. Um, I think that uh, also it's very important to clean up after your ants. Your ants are very clean pets. They will clean themselves, they will clean the nest and they'll store every garbage and corpse in distinct and very specific places. They'll create a graveyard and a garbage site and you have to pick it up because if not then harmful fungus and mold can start to appear and that's not great. So that's all. If you are a beginner, I think that's all you need to know to start uh, ant keeping. And from there you can just expand your mind and your collection to all sorts of new ant colonies and ant setups that you can do. So start out with this video and the ideas here and in my latest one and then grow yourself and your collection into a more knowledgeable and complete ant keeper. And for that, there's my channel and a lot of others, uh, especially a lot of others because I'm uh, not that great. But I do my best, so I'll hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.